Hey, this is Wolf from Armory Train. Hello, this is Chandra. And today we're building, or rather making, some food for a post-apocalyptic LARP. Now this is in no way inspired by Cupcake Kel and her Cupcake Kids No Bake Fruit Loop Cupcakes. Not at all. I'll show you how different they are. Her video is either up there or up there. Feel free to check them out. This is completely different. Firstly, we're using a mini loaf tin, so we'll actually have bars instead of cupcakes. Secondly, they used whole fruit loops, whereas we crush ours. Okay, so story time. Post-apocalyptic areas, when you're scavenging the wastelands, what sort of things are you gonna find? You're gonna find things that are well preserved. And let's face it, fruit loops and um, marshmallows are pretty much pure sugar. So they're gonna last literally forever. And margarine, well, it's a preservative, so it's probably around somewhere, or maybe you milked a cow or a goat or something. So anyway, first step is put some Fruit Loops on a cloth. We then cover the Fruit Loops and we gently break them up. Maybe a little bit more than that. Put some effort into it there, lass. That's better. Now the reason we're breaking up the Fruit Loops is so there's a lot less air in these bars. So they'll be a bit more solid and hopefully stick together just a bit more. I reckon one more bash and we'll have enough here to make our bars. leaving enough Fruit Loops to snack on later while fighting zombies. Okay, you wanna give that a bash? That should just about do it. Okay, now with the marshmallows, we've put that and the margarine in a microwave-proof container and nuked it. For 30 seconds. Then we nuked it again. If you put it on for too long in one hit, the marshmallow will burn and it will turn all black. Now, since I have a mixture of white and pink marshmallows in this, it of course turned pink. Which isn't really a problem for what I'm doing. Okay, so what we need to do now is to put this into the bowl and hopefully my camera person We'll go to the kitchen and retrieve some spray oil from the pantry cupboard. And then we give the tin a decent oiling to make this stuff not stick to it. Because I don't have any square loaf pan, like paper bits at the moment. Okay, so you almost got all of that in there? Yep. Cool. Uh -huh. And magically the canola oil appears. Happy days. So I'm just going to oil this quickly. Probably don't do this in your library because I've got no idea what that oil in the air is going to do to these poor books. But now that this is oiled up, we're going to grab our bowl of Fruit Loops and Fruit Loop bits, which I'm hoping is in camera shot. Yes? No? Yes. Yes. Excellent. And we're going to pour our marshmallow over it. Our gooey, gooey marshmallow. Now, Cupcake Kill and her mix used about 100 mils of marshmallows. 100 grams. Um, I thought that was a bit light on. So I've got about 250 grams of marshmallows and two or three big spoonfuls of margarine. So most of it came out of the um, bowl. The rest of it will have to be carefully licked out later. So now give this a good mix around. We want to have the marshmallows adhering to pretty much everything. Please do. Yeah. Just don't mix it over the sides of the bowl if you can help it. Yeah, that's all right. I've washed my hands. For those that know I'm retrained, we have a really cute workshop dog called Yuki. 
and we made sure that after we played with Yuki, we washed our hands really well before we started doing this because nobody wants doggy um, energy protein bar things. Don't know what they're gonna call them yet. Maybe rain bar, rainbow bars. That could be cool, couldn't it, Chandra? Rainbow bars. Yeah. Okay, now that we've got this well mixed in, thank you, assistant. I'm just making sure we get right to the bottom of the bowl. So it's all gooey and sticky and pink. Okay. That's all right. It'll all get stuck together, or it won't. This is an experiment after all. So I'm gonna have to shift you across a little bit so I can fit this in here. Now what we do is we grab the other spoon that I had with the margarine earlier, and we spoon this into the trays. Now the reason I'm using the other spoon is this is a sticky, sticky mess. And I don't really want it all over my hands. So as you put it in, just push it down. And I'm thinking that this is going to look fantastic. Also, during lark days, this will be almost pure sugar. So you'll have one of these and you'll be bouncing around the battlefield. At least you probably won't get as many jitters as, you know, eating the coffee, chocolate coffee beans. Although maybe you will. Now because we're wanting to make bars, we just fill up the tin to the top of the moulds. I don't know whether we'll have enough here to do all the moulds, but we'll do as many as we can. I saw that. We all saw that. But that's what the assistant is for, isn't it? To help clean up the mess. Okay, now that I've got those four done, I'll turn the tin around and make life easier for me. And actually, I think we will have enough mixture here. Um, you can indeed. I'll just put this one here together. And you'll need the spoon to scrape it off the big wooden one when you get it into the pan. Now, the best thing about these is that we don't have to bake them. All we're going to do, once we're finished filling up the pan here, is stick it in the fridge for an hour, hour and a half, and hopefully the marshmallow will turn back solid, and we can then show you how cool these are, and hopefully convince the organisers that we can take and sell these at the next LARP event to unsuspecting warriors of the wasteland. You know, who part with their hard-won coppers and bottle caps just to get a sugar hit. other bars a little bit and press them back down harder which is another reason why we broke up the fruit loops so they actually can press into bars a bit better than solid rings would so we're just going to finish filling these and then go stick them in the fridge and through the magic of film you'll see what this looks like in an hour's time it's now been two hours since I put this in the fridge and we're going to see whether this sticky marshmallow mess will actually come out of the pan or not I don't have a whole lot of good feelings. Put some baking paper on top of my chopping board and let, let's see, firstly, just tipping it over. Uh, yeah, maybe not quite. Oh no, one came out. One came out. That's pretty cool. Let's, let's ease the other ones with the spatula. Uh, yeah, it looks like all we've got to do is break the um, surface tension a little bit and they slowly come out. So 
So that's half of them out. They form not a bad little block. Um, due to the sugar content in this, I'd contemplate cutting this in half, either into a cube and call it an energy cube, or lengthways and call it a rainbow bar. Boing. Not sleeping tonight. He's a pure sugar. I think though they'd work really well at a post-apocalyptic lap. I mean marshmallows and fruit loops. Both things that are never ever really gonna go you know bad. They may go stale, but they won't go bad. And they've come out okay into the little block format. So yeah, I think wrapped up in some baking paper. They'd go really well for sale in the wasteland setting, or possibly even in a fantasy setting. I was calling them rainbow bars and say that they're magical. They're definitely sticky. But yeah, they're not bad. I'm glad I crushed the Fruit Loops to start with, and that made it a lot more compact, the bar. And these have come out at about a dollar's cost per bar. Because Fruit Loops was just on five dollars and the marshmallows cost me about three. But then I guess I still had margarine and cooking oil to consider. But if I was to cut these in half and sell them for a dollar a cube, I'd make my money back and then a little bit more. So yeah, this is Wolf from Armory Terrain. I'm going to eat a whole lot more of this sugar and then I might go out to the workshop and make something.